Arrow Classic All-Star Game between the Merrimack Valley Conference and the Middlesex League. I'm Mike Moscarello. Joining me is Carl McFadden, graduate of Reading High School. Where was it back in 1987? My goodness, that was a while ago. Carl, member of the uh, track team, basketball team, and played his football not only at Reading High, but on to play at the University of New Haven for a guy who uh, did pretty well for himself coaching in professionals, Chris Palmer. So the Mac Daddy is here to provide us some color commentary as we take a look at the Merrimack Valley in the Middlesex League. And Carl, uh, you've been around this game for a while. These are pretty good uh, football teams. I like the quarterbacks in this football game, especially for the Middlesex League. You've got a couple of guys you can really throw at Tim Reed from Burlington and uh, Kirk Irons from Wakefield. It's funny, Mike, there's a big contrast between the coaching styles of the Middlesex League. Vince Rocky Nelson, as you're well aware of his defense, is his forte offense to him is uh, three downs and a punt and make him very happy. Where you have Sean McGuire who loves to throw it around, so it should be an exciting game tonight. Two head coaches from the Middlesex League, as Carl mentioned, Sean McGuire out of Burlington High School. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Sean, not only a great player at Burlington, but now coaching at his alma mater. Rocky Nelson, coached with Peter Sullivan back in the heyday of the Woburn Tanners, and he's done a good job with that program. He is a defensive specialist, as Carl said. He likes defense. Kenny Maglio is the head coach of the Andover Golden Warriors, his first time on the sidelines here in the Carroll Classic. Andover's got some uh, pretty wide open football. The MVC as a conference, they like to throw it around a lot. I would probably compare them to uh, a Pac-10 maybe or an SEC where the Middlesex League is the old time Big Ten, Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler, grind it out three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, the Merrimack Valley certainly loves to throw the ball around and have a lot of fun with the high school kids here. Hopefully tonight we'll be up and down the field, entertaining game for a pretty good sized crowd for the middle of July, Mike. Jared Pelletier, number one, and Jason Wagstaff, number seven, back to receive the opening kickoff for the MVC. Pelletier near side, Wagstaff far side. And putting it up on the tee for the Middlesex League. They call it the ML10 now. I'm going to avoid that because I don't like it. And that is uh, Craig Iverson from Woburn High School. And he'll go to the pooch kick to the far side. Try an onside kick, and it goes out of bounds. Brian Skeffington, number seven, closest Middlesex League or two. It and hey, that's something that Rocky Nelson doesn't do very often. An onside kick to start the game. Absolutely not. But you know, there's no Middlesex League title up for grabs here. This is a game about kids just having some fun, and um, I think you're gonna see a lot of the razzle dazzle plays here today. Middlesex League coming off a big win last year at the Conley Stadium in Woburn. Two years ago, we were here at the Cowley Stadium in Lowell, and it was a great football game—a 14-13 win by the MVC. This is the eighth game, as I've mentioned before. Four wins for the MVC and uh, three wins for the good guys for the Middlesex Leaguers. Starting quarterback for the MVC is Chris Senek out of Lowell. He wears number 10. The give goes to John Kidd, number 40. And he gets stacked up trying to go over the left side. Kidd is the guy that the Reading fans are familiar with, out of Chelmsford High School. We saw him lug the ball in the Super Bowl and uh, probably had about as much success, a couple yard gain <laughs> on a first down. And one of the things at home, um, fans watch the game, is that there is, you have to play a basic 5-2 defense with no blitzing, supposedly, as you'll probably see if you're watching today. As the third and fourth quarter gets there, uh, Rocky's been known to send a few people on a blitz here, now and then. He'll tell you that it's not blitzing, but his linebacker is reading <laughs> quite quickly. Here's Darren Shaw out of Central Catholic trying to bounce it to the outside. Too much pursuit. Nicholas Cease, one of our guys, number 71, was there for the tackle along with number 58, Bob Kent out of Woburn High School. And uh, number 20, Joe Dillon from Woburn came up nicely from the corner's back spot to fill in to string the play out wide and make the tackle. Loss of a yard on the play, it'll be a third and nine. Joe Dillon, good story. Not only is he a, a solid kid, does a good job on the football field, but his dad, Joe, a very important part of the Carroll Classic early on. Joe did a lot of great leg work. We'll talk more about Joe as the game progresses. Former coach at Burlington High School. Third and nine. Here comes the reverse. And the Middlesex League smells it out. Jonah Beckley, 42, one of the tacklers there, along with number 67, John Hooson out of Winchester. MVC officiating crew with the kind of a Middlesex League twist. Scott Kroll is the man with the white cap. He's a Melrose guy. <laughs> Played his football at Melrose High School. Good solid inside linebacker. And uh, Ronnie Yannon out of North Reading is uh, one of our officials as well. Ronnie is the side judge tonight. Big crew on hand. Seven officials. 
for tonight's game as Eric Mounsey goes back in punt formation. It goes to the far side. Iverson on the run. Dances his way out to the 28-yard line, and that's where the Middlesex Leaguers will pick it up first and 10. Nice return by Iverson, who had to fight the sun. Craig did a real nice job Very catching bad. that on the run. And one of the best things about this, and Mike, you and I will touch on it later, is that there's some tremendous, tremendous students in the game. Craig is one of them going to Holy Cross next year. We have a couple of Harvard grads um, on the Middlesex League team, as well as a Dartmouth uh, student to be. Two kids from Burlington, Adam Jenkins, who wears number 85, and uh, Jason Cook, number 74, both going to Harvard, and Brian Skeffington out of Woburn High School is going to Dartmouth. And hey, look at this, Sean McGuire going empty backfield, five wides. Good protection for Irons going down the field to Berezovsky. Incomplete. Leo Berezovsky and Kirk Irons hooked up quite a bit this past fall. A couple of Wakefielders. I think that right there you see uh, Sean McGuire's influence. I believe he's calling the offensive plays tonight. Just uh, He's going trips on one side and slot on the left side. Just throw the ball around have a good time. Incomplete pass brings up a second and ten. We're playing 12-minute quarters here in Lowell. Nine minutes, 46 seconds to go in the first Double slot receivers. Irons, the draw play, wide open up the middle. And that is Sullivan, number 21. Mark Sullivan out of Wakefield, who had himself a great senior season, following up a terrific junior year. Breaks it across the 40, 41-yard line, first and 10 for the Middlesex League. That's a perfect example is when you spread the field like that, the linebackers have to cheat out to cover the slot receivers. And when you do that, all you need to do is, as a running back is make one tackle miss and then you're able to spring about a 15-yard run. We'll give you the uglies up front on the left side. Jason Cook, 74. Jim Papadinas, 79. We'll give you the rest of the big fellas right after this snap. Sullivan is the move man. Irons hooks up with Cattarelli, number 18, Dan Cattarelli, wide receiver out of Burlington High, on his way to the University of New Hampshire Irons next year. Real basic play, just a nice seven-yard slant Cattarelli there. there and the you can't really play a lot of bump and run in the in the um, in the All-Star game because if you get beat, you know, I haven't been working with your safeties very much, and you kind of a mano a mano out there tonight. Bob Kent, number 58, is the center. Right guard, number 64, Andrew Brown, and Greg Marullo, 75. Those are the big fellas up front on a second, and we're going to call it three. Here's the counter to Iverson. Ran into his own player, but he'll get out very close to a first down, right about midfield. Kind of tough in the All-Star games, Carl, to, to run the misdirection and the timing type of plays. These guys have been at it for about a couple of weeks in terms of uh, putting the pads on, but they've been at this in terms of being a part of the Carroll Classic for the better part of two months. Timing is really the last thing you're gonna get here today and uh, to run a counter tray like that is a little bit difficult but uh, not that bad, badly executed at all. Xavier Garcia comes to the near side as the Middlesex League goes unbalanced to the far side. And they'll blast it ahead with John Beatty Fullback out of Watertown High. Beatty picks up the first down into the bad guy's territory at about the 48-yard line. Real basic, just a dive play to the fullback. Really all he do was lean forward and he was able to get it with these. Beatty played for uh, Watertown High School. Team that always plays tough, Carl. Not a lot of numbers, maybe about 35, 40 kids at the most. But they always put out a good effort. They gave the Rockets a hard time this year. This, they certainly did. I think it was about a seven-point win for the Rockets on their way to the Super Bowl title. Iverson is the go man. Irons back with good protection. Has a man wide open down the middle. Sullivan at the 15 and taken down there. Finally finished off by Ryan Carlson, number 33 from Tewksbury. But a big play for the Middlesex League, about a 36-yarder to the 12-yard line, and they are knocking on the door. Real basic play where Sullivan was in the slot and they motioned out the fullback out into the flats and the linebacker for the Merrimack Valley went out and covered the motion man and Sullivan just ran a 
a pretty basic go pattern and he was wide open. These things happen a lot in all-star games because they have a lot of real, a lot of time scouting as well as preparing against these type of formations. They don't limit the offense very much, but no, they, they certainly don't. do limit the defense. It's Dave Kalianides, wide receiver to the near side. Cartarelli to the top of the screen, double wing. Iverson and Sullivan. Here's the counter to Sullivan. Breaks a couple of tackles and is finally taken down by Carlson along with number 51, excuse me, I thought I was gonna, that was going to say Steve Galuna. No, wrong side, kid. That's Evan Dunn from Chelmsford. Dunn had a good Super Bowl game. Very oh, impressed with absolutely. his abilities. He had a, a tremendous Super Bowl at, at Nickerson Field this year. As the day progresses, we'll have a lot of time to talk about some things. New Super Bowl or playoff format in high school football. We're two months away. I'm going to go on record. I don't like it. No. But if our guys are in it, you know we'll be there behind them 100%. <laughs> but I just don't like the, the playoff Absolutely. format. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Three wides to the top of the screen. Iverson is the lone setback. Irons back. Looking for Beresovsky, and it's incomplete. And I tell you what. That was about a 93-yard yeah, touchdown. Jared the other Pelletier way. was about half a click from turning this baby around. But Beresovsky went inside. The throw went outside. It's going to bring up a third down. We're going to call it nine. The ball sits on the 11-yard line. One quick thing, um, folks at home. The Lowell Maintenance Department and Athletic Department here has done a tremendous job here at Colley Stadium. Um, they've really gone above and beyond the call, getting the field prepared for tonight's game. Field in beautiful shape. Stands on the far side, brandy new. This field has come a long way from where it was about four or five years ago. Irons on the roll, fires to the end zone, and it's a 50-50 ball, and it's incomplete. Kalianides was the intended receiver, Pelletier, on the coverage. Pelletier out of Central Catholic. David ran a, just a basic uh, slant in, and, and as it, the quarterback was scrambling, all you're really looking to do is find an opening, sit down, and David's feet went out from underneath him, but he made a great effort and almost made the catch. Field goal unit on Craig Iverson. Number 22 is the place kicker. Skeffington, number seven, a quarterback. So be aware of a fake here, folks. Good snap. The kick is up. And it is good. It's a real nice kick there by Craig for, in high school, not a lot of practice. Been, he was a much heralded baseball player this spring. I don't think he's been doing a lot of kicking. Um, and for him to nail a 22 yarder right down the middle is quite impressive. Good drive by the Middlesex League. The MVC closes the door as they get in scoring position. Three points on the board for the Middlesex League. 6 one to play in this Carroll Classic here in the first quarter. Mike Moscarello, Carl McFadden alongside. I talked a little bit at the top, Carl, about the cause, the, the Carroll Fund and Camp Carroll. It's a, a terrific organization. I know you've been a part of it for the last several years. It all starts at the top with great people. And, and you start with Pat Egan, who is... Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous individual, uh, the heart of a lion. She's uh, endured some, some real hardships. And uh, we go down to, to Rocky Nelson, a guy you and I both know. And uh, Rock has taken this game, and he has run with it. Uh, he's involved with it in every aspect. Not only is he a head coach this year, but game coordinator, game liaison to the Middlesex League. And he loves this cause, and we know why. Absolutely. The amount of passion that Rocky's able to put into this is just unbelievable. I was fortunate to be in the locker room before the game with his pregame speech, and it was just amazing. Iverson boots this one away, and here is uh, Pelletier at the five to the near sideline. Still on his feet to the 25 and out of bounds. Uh, about the 27-yard line, Jonah Beckley, one of the tacklers there, along with uh, Dustin Taylor from Wakefield. Eight years ago, this game was put together to raise money for the Carroll Fund when Rocky Nelson's daughter Tiffany was diagnosed with cancer. Rocky was always looking for a reason for these two conferences to play an All-Star game. The reason surfaced and they have run with it ever since. We are happy to report that Tiff is in good health. She got a clean bill of health a couple years ago. She looks terrific. We'll see her at halftime. MVC with the ball trailing by three as Josh Tusignant Number nine out of uh, Drake at high school back. He gets drilled by Danny Albertelli as he tried to dump it off to Mike Smith. 
Elbertelli with a textbook stick. Yeah, Matt is, Matt is a, a heck of a defensive end. He's a great physical specimen. He's about 6'2", 215, and uh, this man has found the weight room at his years at Woburn High. He really put on a stick that I'm sure that the quarterback from the Merrimack Valley is not going to forget very quickly. Yeah, next time they call that play, uh, Coach, I'm <laughs> going to audible. <laughs> Shaw and Kidd, the splitbacks behind Tusignant. Second and 10 from the 27. Shaw breaks one tackle. Wrapped up by Beckley and Skeffington. You know, Brian Skeffington is a remarkable story. We saw him, I believe it was mid-October. He uh, broke his ankle slash leg right on the joint there. And uh, it was quite a severe break. And he really fought back and was able to come back at the end of basketball season and almost get Woburn into the tournament, uh, as well as have a tremendous spring on the track team. And to see him out here playing football is great because he was a tremendous all-league player in the Middlesex League. And... If he was, did not get hurt, probably would have given Redding a, and as well as Wakefield a run for the league title, as well as Burlington there. He's a, uh, a tremendous student. I believe he was third in his class, class president, and is heading to Dartmouth next year. Now he is an all-around solid yeah. citizen. Comes from a very athletic family. Absolutely. Skeffington, a very big name in Woburn athletic history. Has passed down the middle for Shaw is incomplete. Chris Senek took over as a quarterback. Shaw wide open on a crossing pattern. They couldn't connect. Three and out for the MVC. The Middlesex League will take it over. Yeah. The crossing parents have really, again, it's another thing about timing. They've been together. This is about their 11th day. They've been together, and um, sometimes it's just easier just to let the kid run straight ahead and throw it up in the air and let him go get it. A couple of dangerous return men back for the Middlesex League. Sullivan near side, Iverson far side, Eric Mounsey, who displayed a very strong leg in the pregame competition. Kicked one about 60-some-odd yards. Takes a high snap. High hanger takes a Middlesex League bounce downed in MVC territory by Jack Byrne from Tewksbury. And uh, Sean McGuire's got a short field to play on. 49 yards to the end zone. They lead it 3-0 with about four and a half to play. It's the type of time that Sean may go right up on top right away to see if he can maybe take the wind out of the Merrimack Valley sails. He's up 3-0. He's probably looking for the quick home run here. Kirk Irons back into the huddle as the quarterback. We will probably see Tim Reed. We may even see Brian Skeffington. Who knows? Talented cast of quarterbacks for the Middlesex League. Garcia comes to the near side along Berezovsky. Kalianides and Cartarelli to the far side. Straight ahead goes Iverson. Down at the 42-yard line. Tackle made there by... Barry McDonald out of Chumsford High. Bruce Rich's team very well represented. The Lions, as we know, in Reading had a great season. And they have a, a couple tremendous juniors coming back next year. I believe the wide receiver um, is a, a big time prospect, Division One. I. I know some scouts, I was um, talking to Tommy Souza yesterday and he was saying that, you know, I believe Hosra is looking at um, offering the man a scholarship. Fumbled snap, and Irons just gets plowed under. Loss of a couple of yards. One of the things you will see in an all-star game, that the connection between center and quarterback. Again, they've been together for 11 days. I would say the over-under is probably about five today where you'll have this handle snaps. Probably not a good time to mention the offensive lineman, but we'll, so we'll skip that. But uh, we will mention that uh, Nicholas Cease, number 71, I believe, is in uh, the right tackle spot. Mike, you mentioned earlier about the quarterbacks. Uh, Middlesex League is loaded, and arguably the, the best quarterback in the league is, is actually over in Italy for three weeks, um, Stephen Pizzotti, and he was a, an all-state quarterback, and he wishes he was able to attend, but he made a, a family commitment. Quick screen to Calianides. Cal couldn't get around the corner. Tackle made by uh, Aaron LeSharrett, number three out of Central Catholic. I tell you what, if Cal can turn the corner, Cotterelli did a great job of screening off his man. And uh, Cal would have had some room. David Kalinitis' is, um, older brother, Eric, who is now an uh, offensive lineman up at Syracuse, uh, was in the game four years ago. And this is a second family member. I don't believe there has been uh, any other family members in the uh, Carroll Classic in the past five years or so. So it's nice to see the brothers together. 
Eric graduated high school at about 270, was an <laughs> offensive tackle, and uh, now runs about three bills, folks. Yes, and there's does. not an ounce of fat on that big body. He's going to be playing offensive line for the Orange. And uh, the Middlesex League comes out in the wishbone, forcing the MVC to take a timeout with uh, room 222 up on the... The scoreboard, two minutes, 22 seconds left, first quarter, 3 nothing. The Middlesex League on top. That's a perfect example of an all-star game. Conventional wisdom would say that you would punt from your own 42-yard line, try pinning them deep, but it is an all-star game, and Rocky and Sean decided to go for it, and um, Merrimack Valley was a little bit slow, recognizing that they were going for it and had to call their timeout. Well, don't let Carl fool you, folks. I know he's talked a lot about the kids having some fun and throwing the ball around a lot tonight, but this is a very competitive football oh, game. These two conferences, two of the best in the state, love to go head-to-head. -head. They always talk about what's happened in the Super Bowls but, and what's happened here in the Carroll Classic. And if you've never met Rocky Nelson, you don't have any idea of how competitive this yeah, gentleman is, absolutely. as is Sean McGuire. Absolutely. These guys want to win this football game. Absolutely. They want to tie it up. As Mike mentioned earlier, the Merrimack Valley is leading the series 4-3, to three, and that was Rocky's pregame speech of making it 4-4. Four, four. Wishbone, they go to the right side behind the unbalanced line, and Iverson didn't get it. He didn't get to the 40-yard line. He needed to get to the 39 so the MVC twice has given up some yards, but then tightened in big situations. Did a nice job, you know, Millsex League got out of the spread out offensive sets they've been going with and tried going a little power and uh, Merrimack Valley stood up to the test. Barry McDonald in the mix again for the MVC. Adam Muzzerell, number two, the quarterback from Central Catholic Carried by Michael Bernier from Drake at high school. Powers his way across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Merrimack Valley's got a little momentum going and the linemen are really gut check time and really starting to drive the Middlesex League off the ball. Now as you look at these two teams, you kind of look down the sizes on the roster, there's some good sized kids, but not too many monsters in this game this year. It looks like size wise, it's a pretty good matchup up front with the big uglies. Absolutely. I mean, we got some guys out here that probably average weight is about 185 to 200, which is not that big compared to some of the high school teams you see out there today. Here's the toss to Kid. Cut down, but he gets across the 50-yard line. David Devereaux, number six up from the secondary. Devereaux out of Stoneham High School. and Devereaux did a nice play. You know, they list him at 5'11", 170, and uh, someone was lying there. He's probably about 160, maybe 150, and he just put his head down and chopped the guy right at the ankle. Did a nice job on the tackle. Kid comes in at 5'10", 210. 5'10", uh, <laughs> I believe. He's uh, built low to the ground. Devereaux got underneath him, but Kid did pick up the first down. Ball sits at midfield. Bernier again running to the right side. On the to the 46-yard line. Michael Bernier you know, from Drake, you know, 6'1", 200 pounds, going to Nichols College. He runs the ball real hard, prototypical Merrimack Valley running back, just puts his head down and plows right at him. Inside of a minute to play in the first, 3-0 Middlesex League. The MVC on the march. Mozzaro on the keeper. And a terrific play made by Dustin Taylor out of Wakefield. Got underneath the pulling guards and made the tackle on Mozzaro. What a nice job by Dustin there. He just absolutely, as Mike mentioned earlier, got underneath this guy, threw out the tackler with one hand, just picked the, um, the quarterback up and threw him to the ground. Big play to make it third and nine. I think if you talk about the Middlesex League, Carl, and you ask the coaches last year, I think player for player, Wakefield probably the most talented team in the league. The Rockets with the league championship, and, well, there was uh, some good coaching, a couple of bounces here and there, Absolutely. and great execution as the first 12 minutes have come and gone here from the Cauley Stadium in Lowell. 3 nothing. The Middlesex League on top via the left foot of Craig Iverson. Coming up at halftime, we'll have some presentations. We'll give out the Cliff Allen Award. 
an award named after my former partner who passed away nearly three years ago. His family will be here representing Cliff Allen. Scott was in the booth a few moments ago. Good to see him, and we'll talk with him at halftime. One of the things, Mike, we mentioned earlier about the cause, these football players um, in the middle of July really working their tail off. Um, practices are not a, a piece of cake whatsoever. They're going about two and a half, three hours working real hard, and, you know, fortunately this summer has been a little less, um, not quite as hot as years past, and still putting on the pads at night from 6 to 8. Most of these kids are working or doing something during the day and, and really doing it for the cause. I'm, I'm proud to announce that this being our eighth year, we'll exceed $175,000 raised in the past eight years. This year alone, we should exceed over $30,000, depending on the gate receipts, and we got a great crowd here tonight, so I feel pretty confident we'll break that $30,000 mark again. The goal set at the breakfast was uh, $35,000, yep. and it was put before these young men to not only play football and represent their school and their conference, but also get involved with the fundraising effort. They may have taken to that, and they've done a terrific job. Senek from the shotgun, going down the middle, has a man. Interference would have been called anyway, but the reception made by Wagstaff, number seven from Tewksbury. Could have been interference on uh, three different receivers there. Um, across the middle, over on the top of the screen on the corner, doing the cut, uh, the quick slant in. Merrimack Valley tried giving Sean McGuire a little taste of his own medicine by going five wides. Scott Kroll, the referee, tells us an interference call against the defense. That's refused. The play stands. The ball sits at the 19-yard line. So the MVC with their deepest penetration of the evening. Mike, really, that's the first penalty of the night, and really both coaching staff should be commended for teaching the kids, you know, let's, do, let's play the game right and let's not cheat and, and hold and do all the little things that they um, typically can get in caught in bad habits doing in all-star games. Shot to the right side. It looks like if the MVC is going to run it, they're going to go right. Shot down to the 16-yard line. A lot of the penalties you see, Carl, typically in these All-Star games, the offside, the illegal procedure, we haven't seen that through the first uh, 13 or so minutes of play. That's a great sign for both sides. Of course, all the coaches involved here are disciplinarians. Kenny Maglio <laughs> is, as is Rocky Nelson and, and Sean McGuire. Seneca has Bernier and Kidd as his running backs. Bernier going right. Not Bernier much room there. Maybe a yard on the play. 